Hi, welcome to Soul Chat. I'm Lainey Risto, and to my right is... I'm Wayne Hildebrand from Spiritus Reiki Center. Who also happens to be a sponsor of the show. I, and you're located at... I, I gotta remember all of this. Yeah. 4170, we do this every week. I South know. Decatur Boulevard, Suite D9. Unless you're coming for a big event, then it's Suite D11. But it's all right there. But it's all right there. You can't miss it. A sign will be out front yeah. directing you. Yeah, yeah. So today we have a special guest that's coming on, and it's Sarah Stone. She's an animal communicator. And she's pretty, too. Yeah, I know you noticed that. Okay, just saying. And tall. Yeah, and tall. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. And she's an animal communicator. She's going to possibly have her own show here one of these days, right? So we invited coming. her to come on and uh, kind of understand the ropes like we know what we're doing. Yeah, we're professionals. <laughs> Sure Just we are. watch our mistakes. Sure we are. But she is going to be at Spiritus Reiki Center on... Oof. Ooh, we should... Uh, March... She's March 14th. She's whispering over here. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll talk more about that once she Yes, she will. On. Thank you. Yeah. yeah but so. she'll be there every week doing yeah. a uh, healing circle. So for dogs, it's going to be pretty cool. Keys. You bring in you for just, animals. You, you don't do, bring the animals. though. Nope. No animals. Just bring yourself and uh, write down a piece of paper, the names and what's the problem. And uh, she'll connect to her angels. And we'll get it's more a beautiful that. thing. That's all yeah. I can say. Yeah. And how did she she just kind of showed up? Huh? Spirit brought she, her to it. It's like a puppy dog. She just showed up at the front door, and I said, okay, come in, here's some water, and she was all happy to hang around. Yeah. It's like a stray, homeless stray. No, I met her over at, uh, at Goldie's Balancing uh, class on first Tuesday, or second Tuesday of every month, and uh, I went over there to see Sarah. Oh, wow. Because I'd heard about her, and I wanted to meet her. And uh, next thing we know, we're having a couple-hour chat. And I chat. got to meet her yesterday. And you got to meet her yesterday, yeah, and we had another cool. couple-hour chat. A, that was a good, that was fun. Girl can chat, huh? Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. So I have a surprise for you. Really? Yeah, oh, I have a surprise I for you. Actually, this. it was a surprise. It's actually a surprise for me, but you're going to like it. You okay. better like it. Okay, I like okay. it. Okay, okay. I want to shout out to Diane in Oklahoma because she called in and said how much she loves our show. Oklahoma. We made it to Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Yeah. Diane, I love you. Actually, she loves me. She thinks I'm very pretty and talented and a strong woman. You're not going to argue, are you? <laughs> She's from Oklahoma. Um, yeah. <laughs> Out there, their husbands okay, beat them. Okay, I can them, see. I know? have to reprogram <laughs> you. I have to reprogram you after the show. We're going to go right into what did I learn about myself last week? Okay. So who's going to start this time? I will. You? I will. <laughs> Yesterday, well, everybody's heard that has listened in for the last couple of weeks, and those of you that haven't, I've been having this cold, plague, virus, whatever that thing is. It's been carrying on and carrying on. And finally, last week, I gave up on Friday and said, I give up. I have a sinus infection. And I actually went to a doctor. Do you know what? And, and just a side note, that's super important for people to understand. Mm -hmm. We're healers. We can only do so much. And it's funny because my story is going to be about the same thing, yeah. you know, about a different type of thing. They had to go to the doctor. But um, that's important that we realize that, that we're healers. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you just have to go visit the doctor. Sometimes there's a reason that you're supposed to go to that doctor. You realize this is on tape. Yeah. Yeah, tug on it. <laughs> I forgot. I mean, yeah. never go to no. <clears throat> so I had all weekend and probably most. What was yesterday? Yesterday was Tuesday, right? Yes, ma'am. Wow, I lost like three days there, and I could barely hold my head up, and I couldn't look at a computer screen, and <laughs> without getting a headache, and you know, and it finally, finally cut loose yesterday a little bit and today i've been actually up and around all day with only a few hours sleep so that's not bad oh not bad at all not bad at all but what i got during that time was other than it's time to take care of myself because i am getting older and you're trailing right along behind there so don't get too righteous about yeah, but it I'm but i'm continuously the same distance behind uh, yeah, you. yeah 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 <laughs> i just remind you it's coming up you know so uh, the other thing is, is yesterday before we saw Sarah, you and I were listening to Wayne Dyer. Yeah. Yeah. And there were his 10 favorite points that he always liked to make. And there are some goods in there, like, uh, good things like, you know, thoughts become things, you mm. know, whatever you're thinking, that's what's going to happen, you know, that kind of stuff. But the one that really got me was he was talking about habits and he was talking about relationships and... I realized last night as I'm trying to go to sleep at about midnight, it wasn't working. I started looking at it. We can't get through this life without a relationship of some kind. Absolutely. Unless you want to go be one of those Tibetan monks that sits in a cave 
which I don't try. I don't understand the purpose of that. So well, that's it's something whole about story. quiet and solitude and focus and really? all of which you don't have. Wow. Wait a minute. <laughs> no wonder Hold you on there. I'm kind of liking this now. <laughs> <laughs> so what I looked at and I started looking at, he told this story, and I was telling you on the way here, um, about a woman who had written down, he had a thing where you wrote down five chapters in your life and, and, and to start with something and how it changed over time. And so in this particular cha- chapters that she wrote, the first one was she walked down this road and she fell in a hole. And after she fell in the hole, she got lost. She couldn't find her way out. Okay. The second chapter was she walked down the road, she saw the hole, and she walked right into it anyway, and she still couldn't get out. The next one was she saw the hole, she fell in it, but this time she figured out how to get out. She found a rope, she found, asked for help, something. I don't want to say this, but this is not a blonde joke, right? No. Okay, go ahead. No. So she, oh, you're going to, never mind. Anyway, <laughs> the next time she walked down the road, she saw the hole, and she walked around it. And bypass falling in the hole. She dyed but her the hair. Next time, the next time, uh, you know, you're going to be sitting between I two know. blondes. You should be very quiet. <laughs> the next time, she just walked down a different road. Yeah, and I started looking at when I listened to that, and I started looking at well, the one that followed it was important too. The one was "Don't die with the music in you," which really comes home. That's to That's one of my favorites that he has said. So I started looking at. How many times have I had relationships with people, whether it's been a primary partnership, whether it's been a friendship, and something about it has gone awry. I mean, nothing in our world never really is a bad thing because we're always going to learn Have it. I pissed you off again? No, but okay, you're about good. to. So anyway. <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> so I started looking at it, and, and I shared with you that I had a shamanic journey done for me this week, and it looked at the threads of my past relationship with my ex-husband how there were still threads of that that i was still bringing along with me i expect people to not be available i expect people to let me down i expect people to not make time for me you know i expect so when somebody finally does do all of one of those things or all of those things it's like oh this can't be happening i've just fallen in that hole again right I need to get out of this mess. Uh, I need to get out because this isn't going to happen. So I'm going to walk away. I mean, how many times have I said I'm gone? I'm out, you know, and I'm still here. So there you go. But I started looking at that and realized, you know, it's time for me. How old am I going to be before I let go of those threads of relationships that just don't work for me anymore? And how soon am I going to recognize the whole early or decide, you know, that's a road I've been down. I'm going to try something different. Right. Wow. And that just sort of opened up perspective for me, which that's another one of his things. It was one of his things was that if you want to change the way things look, you have to change your perspective. So how long is it going to be? Are we getting closer? About five minutes after we leave here. Okay, good. Perfect. <laughs> All good. <laughs> Life is going good. So that's what I learned is that I'm still, even though with all the work that I've done, all the spiritual work that I've done, I still pack those expectations with me that are threads to the past that don't exist anymore. I mean, I mean, I, st- I mean, I loved him. I st- even after we divorced, I loved him. I just couldn't live with him. But he's passed on. So how long am I going to hold on to this? You know. But that's something that uh, Eliana said to us last night when she was passing by, and we were talking about my situation. She said, "Wayne, you're not Superman." That's right. Even though I was wearing red, red panties and everything, you tried I to was convince us, and nobody Superman. wanted to look. So that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so. Right. So. What did you learn? Well, it's funny because um, we're getting ready to come over here, and Lainey's talking to me on the phone, and I'm saying, "So what? Did, what did I learned this week?" Because I've had a lot of lessons. I, I every week I get a lot of lessons. Have you noticed? Especially this? when I'm around to point them out. Phew, man. So she <laughs> says, "Well, I think doubt was part of it." So I realize there's a new math. Yep, doubt equals trust. Trust equals ego. Equals oops. <laughs> Okay, long now tell me how doubt equals do, trust. Yeah, hey? Well, because, uh, well, it's all part of the ego. So if, uh, would you give you really quick, my, my daughter gave a little scare. She's had a knot on her breast for about three months, and we've had some Reiki masters. Uh, my angels over at the uh, center have been doing Reiki on her. I've been doing Reiki on her. And I was on standby. You were on standby. We were, well, yours is when she comes in and has to go under the rattle. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. Under the rattle. <laughs> <laughs> Under the rattle. So we, um, we've been going through this, and, uh, and I keep telling her, honey, it, it's not the C word, so don't worry about that because I'm not feeling that. So she called up two days ago, and she says, 
pops. I went down the internet and I found every symptom I have. You know, my breast is red and it's I hard. I hope she knows you're talking not... about this on air. She'll okay, be okay, go ahead. Okay, she does. all right. And uh, knowing you, she, she said, probably will. Yeah. She said, um, she says I have this rare form of cancer that goes right to stage three. And immediately I went into every doubt I could come up with that everything I have just told her over the past three months was wrong. And then suddenly it's like, I couldn't remember telling her to go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. I couldn't remember telling her to go to the doctor. I'm thinking, did I tell her that, you know, that just let the healing happen and blah, blah. The doubt went crazy in me. So I went into the center, as you know, and uh, in, in our great room, I, I walk a, uh, a medicine wheel out of Sedona. So I walk this medicine wheel and, uh, and uh, I am pounding this drum thinking I'm ripping my drum apart. I am yelling and screaming and having my little meltdown because there's in total doubt. So I get done with this meltdown. I'm getting no answers. I get done with this meltdown. I throw the drum, lands on a chair. I throw the drumstick as I'm walking out the door, back over my head, lands on a chair. But he didn't know it till I, I no told him because I picked it up me. the next day. Yeah. So I, as I get into my truck and I start to head home, I'm like, what is it? You know, I'm telling him, look, I can die. I'm okay. If you want to take me, take me. I'm ready. Don't take her. She's got kids, little kids. They said, what are you panicking about? <laughs> Nothing's happened yet. What are you panicking about? You haven't heard anything yet. And I thought, you know what? You're right. And then I thought, I'm going to stick with this. I'm going to stick with the fact that, that I am okay. And that what I said to her, it stands true. You know, even I don't, still don't feel it. So then it turns out she goes to Cancer Institute the next day and she has a checkup done. And when she walked in within a minute, the cancer doctor says, you don't have cancer. And the doctor told her exactly what I told her. She's breastfeeding and her milk gland was backed up. And it's packed in there. It's become hard and it's, you know, it's become dried milk and calcium and everything else that's in that. So long story short, doubt equal trust because I didn't trust myself. I doubted everything. Didn't trust that God was doing what he said. doubt led you to trust. It did. It led me right down to no trust. And, and what did I say to you about a week ago? You don't trust. You told mm. me to wear my pants when I'm in the center. But what I else were you talking about? <laughs> I did not say that. I wouldn't say that. I'd be more likely to ignore it and let you figure it out yourself, which would be highly entertaining. You what know? did you say? I said, you yeah. don't really trust yourself. Yeah. And, but I didn't want to do trust again. It seems like every week I'm coming on here. What did you learn this week? Trust. Organization. You know, but I'm just not learning it. I think that the big learning on that is the fact that doubt can be the trail to trust. Yeah. And it's trailed right to ego. Because at that point, it wasn't me. Yeah. Yeah. Doubt and ego are tied and yep. yeah and they lead to that trust but it's not only it's trusting what you know what you know that comes from the center it's trusting of who what you, you are. know in your heart what That's you right. feel what you and you just stop doubting it what i think is fun is you're screaming and yelling and beating on the drum and throwing things and and nobody's answering you you're not here nothing they're not take, not a and word they're going okay he'll be done with this not pretty soon it wasn't until i got in the truck and i'm calmed down that they said what are you doing you know it was like what are you worried about and you I'm don't like, know really? anything for sure yeah you have no clue for nothing just let it go and that's that perspective. Your perspective created a world yes, where everything was going to hell. Yep. So long story short, never doubt yourself. Trust what you do. Trust what you know. Trust, and if you do doubt, your gift. know you're coming from ego and there's a way to get to trust and love. Yep. Yeah? It's the same as the ending of a patient. If the patient doesn't get cured and there's something still going on, you say, okay, so what are you holding on to? You have to let it go. It's, it's, it's not ours. Mm -hmm. We're the middleman. I, I just got to remember that. Yeah. Sometimes I think I'm God. No. Ah, just let it go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, we're going to take a two-minute break, and we'll be back two. with Sarah Stone, so we don't animal communicator. <laughs> okay. Hi, welcome Hi, back welcome to back. Soul, Soul Chat. Chat. <laughs> That's a race. <laughs> All right, take it away. All right, I just want to give you a phone number real quick before we get started because our guest is here, as you can see. I'm between two blondes, and that blonde joke was not funny, by the way. It was just... Nobody laughed. Yeah, I noticed. 702-483-4444. <laughs> All we need you to do is call in. Give us your dog's name and... Uh, or, and cat, or cat. Or a cat. Or, or a horse. Or a horse. Or a horse. Any or, animal. Any animal, Any she animal, says. if you'd Guinea like pigs, to Guinea pigs, come on, we can do it all. Little rats, bring them on. And uh, so anyway, so you want to introduce our guest? No, you go ahead. You're doing just fine. Okay. I'm just going to sit over here and be pleasantly. Great. Yeah. 
All right. Well, Until welcome. I'm ready to jump in and rip you apart, to, but it'll be to fine. To my right over here, <laughs> if I can get this mic to slow down, to my right over here is Sarah Stone, and she is a... Um, intuitive healer and animal communicator. That's what she is. Yeah. And, and thank you so much for having me here. You guys are tons of fun. <laughs> All right, you better go. I'm just going to have fun with this. I know. You're, gonna you're just going to just... get serious. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm just waiting for the moment. Yeah. You know? Okay. <laughs> so tell us about what it is, Sarah, when, in a little bit of a nutshell, so we can try to get a whole okay. lot in today. But actually, they want to hear all about you, so go ahead. All righty. Well, what I do is I open a channel, and I see everything in my vision up here. So I work with animals all over the world. And... Um, I actually connect with the angels. They come in and do all the work, and um, I see where they're working uh, on the part of the body, if there's health issues or emotional issues, and they do all the clearing and healing, and I just record it and send it out to my customers. And, um, so we can get information to the animals or from the animals, and we go straight through the um Angels. I have the angels download information the animals need to know, like mom and dad are going away for vacation. Tell them when they're leaving, when they're coming back, why they're going, how safe they are, how safe the animal. And I don't need to know any of the details because the angels know it all. So it works amazingly well. So um, it's well, just lots of fun. Yeah, and I was, I was thinking just now when uh, we were talking about doubt a few minutes ago, uh, you were telling us yesterday about how well, you would see things and you would just doubt it like there's no way. That that dog did not just get healed. In that oh, dog. in the beginning, and, and I, we're about the 15-year mark now of doing this professionally, and um, I doubted most of this up till about three years ago, even though we were getting results. So, um, was, there, uh, was there something that happened, Sarah, that all of a sudden that confidence was just there? Or did yeah. you just wake up one morning and go, you know, I feel... This is real. This is real. This is, I'm doing yeah, it. Yeah. I really think the angels finally said, you know, wake up already. <laughs> you know, we're here, we're doing this. And I'm not sure what flipped the switch, honestly. <laughs> I think it's. I think it has to do because I know when it switched for me, it. I, I had done this for a while. I had to do it for a while, and one day it's kind of like, I noticed. Whoa, uh, I have a. There's. I, I've got something I can reach down and pull up, and that's. I, I hate to call it wisdom, but I think it was, mm -hmm. that they've been down. Finally, downloaded enough wisdom and trusted that it was going to be there. Yeah, I prayed on it for years too. Teach me what I need to know, you know, so I could have more confidence and trust in this. And um, it, one of the, uh, this was a few years ago, but I told you this story yesterday, but um, Shh, a few years ago. Pretend like we ago, didn't know it. Go ahead. We'll be surprised. <laughs> um, a few years ago, a lady called and she wanted to know if there's anything her dog wanted but didn't have. And um, this was in my serious fear doubt mode still and um i i just could see in my vision a carrot and i'm like oh please god give me something <laughs> give me something to tell this lady i was almost in a panic and it starts looking kind of pillowy and so i had to say something and i said just digging my nails into my legs does your dog have a stuffed carrot and she goes oh yeah it's in the garage it needs repair <laughs> and uh and i wanted to say some um amazing words that i would never repeat on, on the radio but i said yeah she, um he wants that uh stuffed carrot <laughs> <laughs> Something it's that, that confirmation simple, yeah. it's that confirmation that, that comes in that was a uh, probably the start of learning to trust it, and it is all trust 100 percent right. trust and my doubt is 100 percent gone but it took a lot of years and my experience of trust is being in the moment when we're in the moment there is no there is no anything you're worrying about or anything you're hoping something's going to happen it's right, like it's right. just it's it, i can't it's hard to put words to it. It's just very solid, and it's just very, I know this, mm -hmm. you know, and it's not, and I also know it's not me. You know, things oh. will come out of my mouth, and I'll go, wow, that was brilliant. I wish I'd have thought of that. Yeah, I, 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 know. I do the muscle <laughs> test real fast. Was that really you or me? Because that couldn't have been me. And they're like, no, it's us. Just let it go. All right, okay, that's a good one. Well, I had a lady call in two weeks ago, um, and on Thursday or Friday, and the dog had a tumor in his stomach, 
um, from x-ray and so she called in a panic and we worked on it throughout the weekend and by Monday um, the ultrasound showed nothing so um, in my mind I'm just half in a panic too just hoping the heck the angels come take care yeah. of this and it's okay to do this and and uh, so it was a real blessing but it's not me by any means as most healers know it, it's just most good healers know yeah, yeah. I'm just you're just a connector I wouldn't have the first idea in my head how to get rid of that thing in the dog's stomach and that's what I really liked about Sarah from the second we met her I mean when I met her too was she just it's not me it's not me. Oh my gosh! I'm no. just this middle person. I'm thinking, wow, she fits right in here. Yeah. Because uh, it's not us. We don't do it. When people walk in, they're talking about the crystal bed. It's not me. So if you have a sample question or you have something, you think, gosh, I have a cat that's got a problem. I've got a cat at home that's got a problem. In fact, I was looking at it last night. I mean, it doesn't have a problem. We're having a problem with the cat, right? 702-483-4444. Please call in. We'd be happy to uh, let Sarah show you her magic. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, is that the cat that doesn't like to be pet? Right. Well, what, what I found last night was... Um, if he, he, this cat feels like if you pet him with your hands or touch him, you're going to get him dirty. He's mm -hmm. all pristine and and very superior. It's a very superior world. cat. It truly yeah. is. And so you're going to get him dirty if you touch him. So we have to work with him to let him know. Or we're wear gloves. <laughs> yeah, we wear gloves. Yeah. I came down this morning and it was using one of those that big chair I've got. You know those two big chairs I've got. And when you walk right through my front door, and the cat's using it for a scratching post, and the scratching post is sitting like two feet away, oh, yeah. and it's like, uh, look it's, at this. You see this? Much more fun. This is mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're having boundary issues. He and I. She and I. It's a she. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she. We call the we call the dog and the cat when we're not home we call them the adventures of fluff and scruff because they absolutely get into it there's no doubt about it there's strange things that happen around my house and so can we uh can we cut to the end of the chase here mm. you got a second i want to hear about the death when you when you're with a person and the animal and you see death coming are you they they know death is coming they want you to be there and help them get through this can you explain to the people how what you see because this is amazing i absolutely love this although i feel bad for the people losing their bet but um i can barely get the words death and dying out of my mouth anymore because i work with the spirit so i see everything in my vision and I watch the spirit simply leave the body and go with this mass of, I call them the pickup angels. <laughs> um, and they, they take care of everything. And then the animals will hang around for a few days. And, or sometimes the angels are in a big hurry for some reason to get them home. But then they take a little journey and they get to the opening of this genuine big white tunnel and there's briefings and then they go through the tunnel eventually uh, with somebody or alone or with another animal and once they get to the other side they go through this process of uh, the physical essence release and real fascinating but it's it's all so beautiful and um, I do a lot of grief healing for people we can connect with them on the other side anytime because the spirits um, always there um, but what I love is it's the same angels that pick us people up that pick up the animals we go the same route to the same place so I know for a fact we get to be with them again um, God loves his animals and he expects us to take, okay. take care of them I really enjoyed what you were going to talk a little more about it after the break but Wayne's going to get all excited here because we yeah. have a caller. We finally got our first caller. Yeah. Okay, Lisa, oh. welcome to the show. Hey, hello. Hello. <laughs> Where are you from, Lisa? I'm from Las Vegas. Oh. I've heard this voice before. I have too. Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> what you got for us, Lisa? What question you got? Well, I have a cat. His name is Ollie. And... Um, we just really need to know why he's so skittish. And we've had him, he's a rescue. We've had him for two, three years now, and we can barely touch him, barely pick him up. We give him his space, but 
you know, the other cats that we have have come around, but he's still so skittish mm-hmm. and frightened still. Yeah, when I tune into Ollie, he's at a bit of a distance in my vision, which tells me he's fearful. Um, what I would do in this case is open a healing channel and go and see what needs to be cleared out of the energy field we'd have the angels download information for him which i could do right now so we'll talk to uh, ollie 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 because uh, i gotta get him fully in my vision and um fully in my vision okay and so we're going to ask the angels to talk to ollie and he really is alarmed looking so um we want the angels to tell him how safe he is um exactly uh the, if it's true i have the angel say if it's true make sure he knows this is his forever home that's never going to happen to him again um and also i'll ask the angels now to just download to him everything he needs to know about what happened with the previous people or family or what happened how they got separated the whole big universal picture in such a way that'll bring him peace and um understanding and um also he just needs to know who everybody in the house is and i don't know if i could do this this quickly but i'll open a channel on everybody in the household all the animals how many people are there <laughs> There's a bunch. There's eight. Okay. Well, anyway, everybody in the household. So it's probably pretty chaotic for me. May he, you know may have come from a one person householder. But anyway, um, we'll ask the angels to introduce him to every person and animal in that household, so he knows exactly who they are, because he's just at a loss. It's very confusing. So um, I'm just kind of watching till his expression changes and i i usually spend two three hours focusing on an animal like this when i do a full healing session and record it and then um, send it out email to my customers but so ollie is listening he's he's a pretty smart guy (laughs) and um if i look at his body let's just see overall how old is he it looks like his hips are sore um, do you know how old he is? Um, I we caught him probably when he was about a year old, so huh. about four. Oh boy! And then I also see the root chakra showing up real strongly, which addresses um, instability, fear, ungrounded, and not feeling safe. So when I see that, that means they're working on it and clearing it, so that he can have those opposite feelings. Um, and so how much can you help on my scale of one to ten how much can you help ollie i get like a six seven that's very good so um we could really help him out if this doesn't do enough uh you're welcome to call me um in my office but um what else? Well, let's see if Ollie has, what does Ollie have to say? Does he have a message for you? Oh, well, he really loves you. Believe it or not, I see <laughs> him really uh, uh, pushing up against you, but there's, he's just afraid for some reason. So we'll let him know how much you love and adore him. Just angels tell him how much you absolutely love and adore him and how safe he is with you and that you mm-hmm. want to be able to cuddle with him. And you know what? He really wants that. So I think you'll be seeing a change. Um, I see him in your lap cuddling. That's what he really wants. So, um, yeah. Lisa, I want to be in your lap cuddling, just so you know. You just took that moment wholly away. I know, but I just want you to know. (laughs) All right, on that note, we're going to take a a minute break here, and we'll be back. We'll get Lisa's phone number to um, Sarah, so... You can do more. Yeah, she wants to. Yeah. I'd love to. All right. We'll be back in a minute. Hi, this is Lenny Risto. Welcome back to Soul Chat. We're with Sarah Stone, the animal communicator. Some of you have been listening. You just heard we did a session on Ollie the cat. 
and Ollie talked to Sarah, and she talked to angels, and we're going to connect her with Lisa and the was phone it, number. Was it not pretty fascinating? It was fascinating. I mean, the energy you, in the room was just still. We when were all you listening. you see it on video, and you see where she's talking about where she's seeing the angels and how she right. sees it, it's just incredible. It's my other world. It's the world I'm in most of the time, <laughs> which is quite <laughs> pleasant. <laughs> Yeah, so if anybody, we probably have time for one more caller, or at least one, maybe two. If you want to call in, the number is... 702-483-4444. I'm just glad I have a job here. I know, <laughs> yeah, by a thread. <laughs> and, then, and then, Sarah, you want to give out your phone number? Sure. So they can call you. Uh, my office number is 702-689-8800. Um, email is... My name Sarah Stone and the number two at gmail.com and Sarah's with an H. And say that phone number one more time because people don't get it that fast. <laughs> seven seven <laughs> oh two <laughs> slow like six eight nine eight eight zero zero. Okay. All right. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, animals and spirits, that they have a spirit as well. You and I were talking Heaven about just. it a little bit yesterday. And it's a little different than the human spirit. Because talk about that. Because I think some people think, oh, it's just they're just an animal when they, you know. That's where but we were if, raised. Yeah, so that's the dog go. They don't have a soul. They don't have a ask, soul. Isn't that sad? It is sad. Um, so talk about that. Well, um, I um, prayed on that for a number of years, and I believe I have the full answer now. And that um, the animals are a different kind of energy. It's called the L energy, E L, and we're I don't know what energy we are. We're something else. But so animals. Oh, we're something else, all right. <laughs> animals don't go back and forth from people to animals, no matter what anybody tells you. Um, I've really come to that conclusion, and uh, through a number of, of, of good channeling sources, and um, so uh, they have definitely have spirits and souls. First of all, look in their eyes; they got a beating heart. Um, they come here, and then they cross over and go home, and I. I see them on the other side. Those are spirits. And, of course, I work with animal spirits. I mean, I teach people how to connect to their animal spirit, which is different so people understand. Your power animal spirit is different than the spirit of your dog. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Although it's interesting because Wayne's seen this. I'll be teaching people how to journey. And sometimes the first animal spirit they connect with is a dog they had in their past that's crossed over. And that's always a very moving experience. Oh, sure. They can come visit. And I think the reason is is because animals are truly unconditional love. Yeah. You just look in those eyes. If you want to learn what true love feels like, look in their eyes. Look deep in their eyes, and you'll feel this blossom in your heart. Um, I don't think I ever would have known what that blossoming true love in the heart felt like if I couldn't look into my animal's eyes, my cats and dogs. But um, people's another story, but (laughs) the animals are good. (laughs) But, um, you know, as as true spirits, these animals have very real feelings, very real thoughts, um, and they run the gamut just like people. They each have their own separate personality, and they run the gamut from super smart and wise to not so sharp. Not so sharp. Yeah, Just I've like, had a couple of so, those dogs. Yeah, every single one of them's different. Mm-hmm. So people will say, my gosh, my last Sheltie was just so perfect, and this one, so do what? I'm not connected. Well, it's just a whole different personality, and that personality is with the spirit. It goes, and that's and that personality is with them on the other side, too. Wow. So it's very interesting. I've just learned, and, and I everything that I, I, I don't get this from books. I've learned this over the years because I don't know what's true in books, but I know what I've learned and seen. So... Um, and it's really fun to share it now. Um, it Do you think that um, because it's everybody's pretty the accepted thought is that the human soul we're in a we're in Earth school, um, we're progressing. Our spirit is learning. It's you know there's the whole reincarnation thing. Do you think that um, animals go through that as well? Yeah, because I've actually seen that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I can tell on occasion 
it doesn't come up all that often when we have to work with a past life issue. There's a certain um, kind of a vision or symbol type of thing I get that I know, oh my gosh, okay, it's going to be a lot more work than I thought. Yeah, I so, love those uh, moments. <laughs> yeah, so that we have to go back and, and help to uh, all for the highest and greatest good for that for the universe and that that animal um have to um help them release cell memory that's not serving them in this lifetime that's creating problems in this lifetime that works pretty yeah i believe in cell memory i really do i think it's got to be there i mean it's uh, we're we're you know products of our ancestors um i was just thinking there's a lot of stuff going on in there yeah yeah oh yeah there's a lot going on there and i was just thinking of the spirit animals that i've worked with i will see a bear this is the one I run into quite a bit, actually. Okay. And sometimes it, I will see this bear, and I, at first I think it's a polar bear, but it's not. It's got an iridescent quality. There's a transformed bear. There's a, the, the, the animals can transform and go to more, more spirit than who you think they are, mm. which is interesting. So I wonder how that all works. We should, we should journey on that sometime yeah, and say, what not is sure about this that one. all about, you know? <laughs> but... Um, but so so animals spirits most people are you know like like wayne said we're raised oh it's just a dog or it's just a cat yeah, no, when so they're gone they're so gone. sad when that which is really which is really sad and i will say that there have i've i told you about an incident that i worked with with a, a dog uh-huh. where literally in this journey they had me carry this dog's spirit to and saint francis came out and then yeah. there was this whole pack I of dogs saint that francis. came out it was one of the most moving things i'd ever done well Another thing that I think a lot of people don't quite, or some people don't quite understand, is um, animals and the dogs and the cats, they get cold in the winter, and they like to be warm. Some dogs, you know, are fine the way they are, but a lot of them, the short hairs, and that floor is cold, even up through their beds, and they like to be warm. And uh, I have a heated heated blanket for my kitties at home. I can't, I just they I just got it. this image of what her living room must look like. <laughs> They're off the floor. It's with actually no under my bed. The yeah. heated blanket. Yeah. That's where they gather. But um, so uh, but they I really want people to know I, how often an animal tells me he's cold. Really. In the winter time, yeah. Or That's even in the the brutal air conditioning we have here. Right, so, um, and then they're they're paws during the summer, right? I mean, oh yeah, the hot, crazy. The, I mean, the the sidewalks. Oh, you see yeah. the dogs yeah, out burn. there running around, and they're taking them for a walk like everything is normal, even yeah. though it's 150. They're wearing outside. tennis shoes, and the dogs on on yeah. their pads, you know, going yeah. down the sidewalk. Well, there's all sorts of little slippers you could put on them now, but anyway, it's too hot to walk them. Is at that there point so, anyway. is there a general thing other than keeping them warm? Is there something in general you could tell people that they could oh. do for their animals or their pets? Is there a common thing that you hear a lot? Um, you could put, you know, either buy them a nice little jacket, especially to sleep in, or put one of your old T-shirts on them or a shirt if you don't want to uh, spend any money on those. Um, now, see, button. it's interesting that you brought that up because I used to raise Chesapeake Bay Retrievers, mm-hmm. and they're a very interesting dog. They've been bred to swim, and they can swim in freezing water because yeah, they're duck like retrievers. Yeah, like a husky doesn't want to wear a coat. No, you wouldn't want to do that. Winter. So that's not, not necessarily a general thing, Mm-mm. you know. Uh, the, but, like but, the short hairs. But I have a dog that she doesn't have short hair, but she doesn't have much of an undercoat. Mm. It's like that long, you've seen her, that yeah. long fur, and it's right down to skin. And she's she's an interesting, she's a spirit mm. dog, too. I, I'm not sure what she's doing here. But <laughs> <laughs> but is there something, in a, uh, maybe something that they'd like to hear? What would they like to hear? Is there something animals would like to hear that they don't? Let's fetch. see. Well, of course. Huh? Fetch. No. <laughs> fetch. <laughs> the fetch would be good. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's so individual. But. Every animal wants to feel love and acceptance from their people, and um, they pick up mm-hmm. these the worst feelings we have. We can put a great big smile on our face, but they're feeling our feelings, and that literally can make them sick. So a lot of times I have to work on the So they're people. very empathic. Some are more than others. Yeah. And... Uh, then we have to work on the people and um another one oh it's gonna be longer than i thought it was but um yeah. so um i've been suggesting essential oils for the people not the animals because i'm not so sure so not all that good for animals every some are but um 
juries out there. But the people can put on the oils for calming and depression. And if a person's depressed, if they're a very empathic animal, that, that pet's going to be depressed. So there's it's that sad. thing again. Put on your own and oxygen might, mask. And he might you. even stop using the litter box or go potty in the house. Just yeah. addressing this um, or some type of behavior, addressing the people's feelings. So... I never know what I'm going to see when we get in there, but it's always fascinating. Yeah, yeah, really good. We're going to take a break, one-minute break, and we will be back with Sarah Stone and Wayne Hilterbrand. I'm coming back? You are. (laughs) Against my better judgment, but you're coming back. On the darkest of days. Hi, welcome back to Soul Chat. I'm here with Lainey Risto, and I'm here with Sarah Stone. And uh, we have some some sponsors we need to mention because right. I was expecting Matt to call in, give us a story about his dog or cat. You know, just he's that kind of a guy. Or, thought, or about David. Or maybe about David. David. You know, maybe yeah. she fixed yeah, David yeah, yeah. or something. But anyway, tell us about Mr. <laughs> yeah. Smith. Mr. Smith is our other sponsor besides Spiritus Reiki Center. And it's a production, advertising, couple of great creative guys. It's called Mr. Smith Ultimate Possibilities. And for those of you that are going to get to see the video when it's up on online um their work is behind us it'll be stars and a tree and they have the film of the owl and it's pretty cool yeah it's very cool yeah very so talented, if you want to check them out please do so at mr i am mr smith.com and you can find out more about them and of course their spiritus reiki center of course yeah and, and uh if you wish to call into us we still have time for maybe a half a phone call 702-483-4444 yeah. if not you can get a hold of sarah at Seven zero two six eight nine eighty eight hundred, or my email is Sarah Stone two at gmail dot com. Website should be up by the end of the week. We're, we have it on. We have that recorded now. So yeah, this has been for about the last six months. We were talking yesterday oh, about websites. <laughs> so I'm behind. It's been all paid behind. for for months, and I haven't gotten yeah, it done. <laughs> it's going to happen now. Yeah. So we're going to talk. We're going to finish at the show, and we're talk, going to talk about animals with the death and dying. And I love that. What happens? Give us. You have a great story about a horse and a goat and a partridge and a pear tree yeah. and everybody else involved. You know. One time I was. Um, um, a, a client had to put a little pony down and uh, so we set up a team so it would have an easy crossing because it's kind of rough on the horses the big ones um, but um, so he, he crossed very easily didn't thrash like the vet said it would um, and so he took his little journey when he got up to the tunnel which was I don't know a few days later because mm-hmm. I was just checking every day and um he went through the tunnel with a goat on his back and i'd i'd never seen anything like that before and i thought well that's really am i seeing that is that anyway so i uh called a lady and i said it's the darndest thing well he did he just got through the tunnel he's on the other side but he had a goat on his back and she goes Oh, that was his best friend. He died a year ago. And you had no way of knowing that. No. Nobody'd mentioned that, right? No, I was just like, is that a goat? <laughs> <laughs> wow. You know? Wow. And so I, I, that's really fun. But I, I just want everybody to know that they, they're so fearful when their pets cross or even people that they're lost. They don't know what happened. Um, scared. Oh my gosh! It's the people are that way, or the animal is that way. The people think the animal, if, uh. and there's this huge group of pickup angels, and they—it's just the most beautiful thing. And the minute those animals leave their body, they're just like sometimes some of them go running and play and hop, and some go back to uh, baby stage, and they feel so good and so happy to be home. They're always looking so confident. And it's a beautiful thing. And I want to say a lot of people have a horrible guilt um, about maybe they waited too long or it doesn't really matter. It, when they're home, everything's it's bright. They've got more work to do once they get across that uh, channel, just like um, we do. Right. And uh, if you heard a horrible howl at the end or it, it seemed like a very long, slow Uh, death where there was no response they've already left their body and when that sometimes when the body shuts down um, you'll hear a howl or something 
which is haunting to people, but they're already out of the body. It's just the body shutting down. So they could be out of that body uh, for 24 hours, even people, when they're just laying right. there lifeless. So, I think it's important to note that a healthy animal is usually in the moment. Mm. I mean, they live in the moment. They're not, they're not. If you find an animal that's worried, something's wrong. It's you know? coming from the people. That's right. In the household. But for, for the most part, they're in that. We always laugh about my dog because she is so excited to see us when we come home. And the standard line around our house, my son and his girlfriend live with me, the standard line around the house is, is oh, my God, I didn't die after all. And the dog's yeah. jumping four feet in the air. Because <laughs> when you leave, it's like, oh, they're gone. They have no concept mm -hmm. of when you're coming back again. I always have the angels tell my kitties when I'm leaving and when I'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe that's something people know, could do. They maybe yeah. they could just look at the animal and say, I'm leaving now and I'll be back in time to feed you. Because yeah. they don't know time. They don't get time. That's right. Yeah. Or try that and you try asking the angels to tell them. Or do. you could set a timer. Because my dog sits there, I'll watch her. She'll be laying on the rug and, and the kids are gone and they're coming back in the house and all of a sudden her ears come up. I'm not hearing nothing. I got my hearing's yeah, a little know. rough, you know. But she's heard something or she sensed something. And sure enough, with inside inside of two minutes, I'll hear the garage door. Oops, a rod, garage oh, door yeah. coming they up. They hear them coming down the block before I they know. even it's, anywhere near. It's a no know. Almost a sense because I was pet sitting a little black cocker spaniel one time and um, it was my friend's dog and... I had her um, flight time somehow an hour off, so I was going to bring the dog to the airport to pick her up. And somehow, the time that I was supposed to leave, that dog got up and went to the door. And, I, and we were an hour early in my head. Isn't that the darndest thing? I was just, like, so stunned. So she knew the right time Yeah. when Mom was landing. That's right. Wow. That's right. Yeah. Well, Sarah, it's been great having you on the show. Oh, we thank could you. we could do Loved this so it. easily for two hours. We're yeah, we looking went forward to that to last show. night. We could have sat yeah, there another couple hours. Right. It was so much fun. That's <laughs> right. That's right. So we want to thank Lawrence and Beth. Lawrence on the board and Beth on the camera, making us look good. Really? Me she anyway. made me look good? Yeah. She's she a miracle did. worker. Yeah, I love did. her. <laughs> Spiritus Ricky Center for being our sponsors and Mr. Smith. And if you'd like to check them out, go what's to IamMrSmith.com. What's those guys' name? Matt Kerner and David Valentine. Just check us. if you remember. got it. Yeah. So, Sarah, you're going to be you're going to be at Spiritus Ricky Center. You're going to be yes. doing, uh, uh, what? give us the date and the time. Um, it's going to be... Every Monday night at 6.30, starting the 14th of March, and we're going to be doing group healings for animals. Now, they don't bring their animals, don't right? Don't need to bring that animal at all. Uh, but you'll just put on paper what your intention is, and uh, we'll put them all in the center of the room, and it's a donation. Right. It's it, a it, donation. Right. It'll be suggested. We to are 20, excited. We are uh, excited. Yeah. This well, is going to be great. my angels have been pushing me to do this for two or three years, and I'm finally um, stepping out and. Like the website. Going to give the world. <laughs> oh, that. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Well, thank yeah. you. Give them your phone number one more time. All right. It's 702 689 8800. And we'd love to have you back. Well, because thank we could you. I'd talk love to about come back. yeah, we could talk about this. And, for a and while. we'd like to be on your show too when you get yours okay. going. <laughs> you I noticed he said <laughs> we. Yeah, okay. I and, meant me, but I, so I said you. And so, so <laughs> Wayne, you want to talk More about what's point. coming on at Spirit of Reiki? Uh, we got a few things going on. We got uh, every Thursday night we have the Reiki Circle. Don't forget that uh, six thirty to eight thirty every Thursday. Mm -hmm. Um, this month, we were going to do a master's training class, Reiki, Holy Fire Reiki master training class, but we canceled it um, for several reasons, but one of them was we canceled it. <laughs> <laughs> we just did it. Yeah. Yep. And yeah. Uh, Phone I, number if they wanted to reach you to find out about what else is going on. Right to my on. cell phone, 702-810-3354. And I'm Lainey Risto. I'm a shamanic healer and practitioner and teacher. And I, this Sunday at, on March 6th, yes, you do. I have a healing circle and it's going to be about lighting that inner fire because we've got a solar eclipse happening next week. We've got a new moon happening. Jupiter's going to be doing something crazy. If you'd like more information, you can reach me at 702-308-8464. So this week, look at doubt. Do you have doubt coming up in your life and look at it as a tool or look at the habits that you have that are really have their beginnings in the past because you can change them just by stopping and taking a different road and if you have an animal 
talk to them. Let them know how happy you are that they're in your life. Or talk to their angels. Um, talk Let to their angels. And we will be back next week with Sherry Williams on her vision boards. Have a great week. Have a great Bye week, all. everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you so much.